70 million tons of beef are consumed each year worldwide. The US and Australia account for more than one-fifth of the global organic beef supply. Both are organic beef. But why do Americans trust their own meat, while many Asian countries prefer Australian beef? So, is US or Australian organic beef tastier, cleaner, more authentic? And are you trusting a label more than the truth? This journey will not simply be about meat, but about how the world defines the truth behind the word organic. An interesting battle, US versus Australian organic beef. Two different production systems, two different philosophies, and two very distinct ways of storytelling. You will follow the entire journey, from how the cattle are raised, to how they are inspected, packaged, and placed on supermarket shelves. And especially, at the end of the video, you will discover a little-known truth. There is beef labeled organic, but it has never touched grass. How is that accepted? If you think you are eating clean beef, you might want to watch until the end. In the US, organic cattle are raised according to a precise management system, like a smokeless factory. Each cow has a tracking chip, and their feed intake, movement, and daily health are monitored. They are controlled grazed a few hours each day on planned pastures. And the majority of their food is hay, non-GMO young soybeans, and of course, organic. Meanwhile, cattle in Australia almost never see barns. They live entirely outdoors on pastures, where the dry season, rainy season, and soil quality determine the flavor of the meat. No chips, no collars, just the cow, and hectares of sky. One side believes in data, the other believes in nature. But does absolute freedom always equate to superior quality? Or sometimes does control create stability? Interestingly, in Australia, some harsh climate regions like central Queensland produce a type of meat sought after by chefs. Due to its high intramuscular fat ratio, thanks to the cattle storing fat to withstand the dry winter. Meanwhile, in the US, Marbling is controlled with absolute precision, and it's not just living conditions. Sometimes, cultural factors also shape the way they are raised. In the US, vaccinating cattle against diseases is very common, even in organic systems. But in many regions of Australia, farmers choose to zone off epidemics and minimize contact, instead of mass vaccination. Did you know? Organic cattle in the U.S. can still eat processed feed, as long as the ingredients are certified organic. On some U.S. farms, the menu for cattle is programmed like for athletes. Organic soybeans, compressed hay, sometimes even chia seeds and flax seeds to optimize omega-3. Not every farm does this, only those capable of controlling the entire supply chain. In the industry, this is called programming meat flavor where each piece of marbling is calculated no differently than blending perfume. There are even systems that use AI to predict the pH and sweetness of the meat after slaughter, based on the diet and environmental temperature in the last 30 days. The difference starts here. US beef is often more tender, with a slight sweetness. But in return, the marbling can be thicker, sometimes causing the meat to be judged as slightly fatty. In the US, some high-end organic beef companies even experiment with a 45-day organic grain finishing process, not to increase weight, but to precisely control the fat content of the marbling. Sounds very healthy, but is it pasture-raised beef? Meanwhile, in Australia, there are farms with absolutely no feed formulas. Cattle eat whatever they find on the pasture, whatever is in season, grass, leaves, even weeds. And that randomness creates what many call nutritional personality. Some studies have found significant differences in microminerals like iron, zinc, and omega-3 in meat raised according to local vegetation. Meanwhile, US beef has absolute consistency between batches. Some Australian export companies even classify meat by season. Winter cut is fatty and dark red. Spring cut is tender, fresh, and leaner. These details are never written on the label, but high-end chefs pass them on by word of mouth. Some praise it as the true flavor of beef, but others criticize it as tough and less fatty. 
But before leaving the scale between natural and controlled, there's a little notice detail. What truly makes something delicious? The answer probably doesn't lie in the laboratory, but in individual taste. Another study once showed, with the same breed of cattle, when raised in a programmed style in the US and free range in Australia, there was a clear difference in glutamate levels, the compound that affects natural umami flavor. So, the feeling of deliciousness sometimes doesn't come from the cooking method, but from how the cow lived. The question arises, do you want to eat the result of a programmed nutritional equation or the meat where each piece is an exploration? Because right after this, you will see that difference, however subtle, becomes a competitive advantage between the two countries in the global market. Did you know? Organic beef accounts for only a very small portion of the total global meat consumption. But it is a segment that generates the most emotion and controversy. Australia, with its image of cattle leisurely grazing across the prairie, is aggressively pushing exports. In 2024 alone, Australia's beef export production reached over 1.69 million tons, a significant portion of which is labeled organic for premium markets such as Japan, the Middle East, and Europe. The US is not standing idly by. In some months, the value of beef exports has reached the 1 billion USD mark. But this is not just a race for output. It's a battle for trust. In the US, organic beef is often consumed domestically, where consumers trust USDA standards. In addition, the rigorous certification and inspection are also an advantage, as many consumers are interested in the record of each piece of meat they use. But that very control sometimes makes the meat suspected of being too industrial. Conversely, Australian beef has a different advantage with its image of pastures and clean weather cleverly woven into marketing campaigns. This is when the brand speaks up. Some producers turn beef into a national symbol. They talk about the young grass of Gippsland. They emphasize that the pastures are watered with clean water from melting snow. Even, they sell meat with images of blue skies. And if I told you that, a piece of beef labeled organic is inspected down to every indicator, but it comes from a cow that has never been outside on a pasture. Would you believe it? That's what's happening on some farms in the US. The system allows it, because according to USDA regulations, as long as the cattle have no hormones, no antibiotics, and eat certified organic feed, they are eligible to be labeled organic. Whether the cattle graze on grass, move around, or have contact with nature is not a mandatory factor. In Australia, the recognized body, ACO, Australian Certified Organic, has stricter requirements. They not only check the feed, but also check grazing conditions, the time cattle spend in natural environments, and even the transportation process. An important point is that in the US, inspection is done by sample, not per animal. But in Australia, Many organic farms accept inspection of small batches at each stage, with more frequent intervals to maintain international trust. Seemingly the same labels, but behind them are two completely different sets of standards. And what's more, ordinary consumers, when holding a piece of meat, cannot distinguish that difference. Do you think standards don't affect price? A report from the US meat industry once admitted, there were batches of meat that were split in half, same quality, but different labels. One for the domestic market, one for Asian export. And the truth is, no one knows which side is the original. Perhaps that's why in the same supermarket, you will see two pieces of beef that look the same, but the price is double. One says grass-fed organic, the other says grain-finished USDA organic. Each tells a story and waits for you to choose to believe. But that's not all. At a higher level, organic beef even becomes something called food diplomacy. In free trade agreements, Australia often sets the export of organic beef as a condition for bilateral relations. Japan, Singapore, UAE. Many countries have accessed Australian beef through preferential tax policies. What about the US? They use beef to assert high agricultural standards, especially when exporting to markets like South Korea or China. 
Beef becomes a symbol of a reliable supply chain. One piece of meat, but it carries policy, trust, culture, and commercial strategy. And that's not printed on the label. If you are an importer, would you choose the type of meat that is inspected down to the gene or the type of meat with a more appealing natural story? So finally, what are you buying when you buy a piece of organic beef? A label, a technical record, or just the feeling that you've made the right choice among countless options where no one is truly transparent? Organic beef, ideally, is a symbol of a kinder world. No chemicals, no deceit, no trading health for profit. But when you see labels being abused, when the market uses the word organic as a marketing tool, can you still maintain your initial trust? Maybe you will choose Australian meat because you like the idea of free pastures. Maybe you will choose US meat because you believe in data and control. But whatever you choose, remember, quality is not in the label. It's in how you ask questions. If you think the organic beef war is over, wait until you see what's happening on the giant pineapple fields in the Philippines. A fruit that seems so sweet, but behind it is an entire industry with little known facts. Don't miss the next episode when we dissect the truth behind millions of tons of pineapples grown, harvested, and exported from this tropical country. Do you really know where the pineapple you eat comes from? and what trade-offs are made to get that flavor.